Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Scale Modeling with Mike Ashey. Today, we're going to take a really good look at Trumpeter's brand new tooled 1 to 350th scale German battleship Bismarck. I've taken a preliminary look at this kit and some of the parts, and I got to tell you, Trumpeter outdid themselves this time. So, we're going to open up the box, and I'm going to show you just how well Trumpeter packaged this model together so that none of the parts would get damaged. And then we're going to go through the sprues, and then I'm going to show you a tape up of this model with the hull, the main deck, and all the main superstructure parts so that you can see for yourself just how impressive the detail is on this model. And I'm going to show you any flaws or any problem areas and give you some suggestions on how to fix them. Hey everybody, so let's take a peek in the box. Trumpeter gives you a 36 page, well illustrated assembly manual. Typical of all Trumpeter ship kits, you get this beautifully illustrated painting guide. And they even slipped in an advertisement. And what I noticed on this is that Trumpeter is now producing and selling 1 to 350th scale pre painted aircraft. One piece hull, no more upper and lower. The Bismarck is a one piece hull. And incidentally, all of their parts in here are vacuum sealed, not stapled like previous kits where the staples can cause damage. The hull is about 0 0.080 inches thick, and so there's very little flexing of the hull. The main deck is one piece, and it's about 0 0.080 inches thick, so there's no flexing. And Trumpeter took the time to wrap the bow and the stern in styrofoam to prevent its damaging. Several photo wet sheets make this kit a complete kit. In addition, what Trumpeter did on the photo wet sheets, and I, I believe they do this on all of them, they layer a piece of thin plastic, clear plastic over each side so that it seals the photo wet and prevents it from tarnishing. To prevent the hull and the main deck from shifting back and forth, they even inserted and glued a small piece of black styrofoam on one side so it's a nice tight fit. You get the typical trumpeter stand, and on the underside are the clear Arado aircraft. The 01 level is one piece and the superstructure sides are rendered with all kinds of beautiful detail and very accurate. This box, which acts as a spacer between the sets of trees, also contains a lot of small parts, small superstructure parts as well as the main battery turrets. So don't throw the box out. A lot of their small parts are covered and wrapped in this very, very thin but protective styrofoam, and it's taped in place. Again, everything is vacuum sealed. These are the <clears throat> internal uh, structural parts that help even prevent the hull from flexing even more, and um, the bow, the lower bow areas, left and right sides. Superstructure parts. Even the deck rendering is just superior in every way. Very, very well detailed. More styrofoam covering all of the very delicate parts wrapped around. You get four trees of this with lots of spares. It contains a lot of the, uh, the guns and smaller detail parts. Incidentally, there's over a thousand parts in this kit. So again, you got to be real patient and go slow when you're building it. Another thing I noticed is Trumpeter took a great amount of effort in where they attached the trees to the parts so that it would be easy to clip them off without damaging the sides. In some previous Trumpeter kits, some of the tree parts were actually attached to the sides of parts. And when you clipped them off, you had to do a lot of work in order to repair that damage. Another tree that contains small parts and wrapped in styrofoam. And lastly, 
one more tree wrapped in styrofoam. A lot of the splinter shields are separate, which makes it easier to paint the deck and then glue on the splinter shields. And finally, the decals. And what Trumpeter did in order to allow you to accurately depict the Bismarck with the swastikas on the bow and on the stern, they gave you black stripes so that you can assemble your own swastikas. So now let's take a closer look at the trees and then we'll take a look at the uh, tape up of the model. Stay tuned. Here's the one piece hull and the main deck. The lower bow has two additional pieces to glue together and then glue onto the hull. The 01 superstructure level is also one piece. Sprue H has two large superstructure parts. Sprue A has the internal framing and the bow parts and the nameplate. Here is sprue B. Here is sprue E, and there's four of these. Here is sprue F, and there's two of these. Here is sprue K. Here is sprue L. Here is sprue S, and there's two of these. Here's the aircraft sprue, and there's two of them. Here are two photo wet sheet A's. And there are two photo wet sheet C's. There's one photo wet sheet B. Here are the back parts inside the white separator box. Here's the main turrets. Here's the anti-aircraft gun bases. And here are the secondary turrets. Here's the first batch of superstructure parts from the separator box. And more superstructure parts from the same box. And these are the last parts that were associated with the white box. The assembly instructions and the color sheet are excellent. Now for the tape up. Here's the hull and main deck taped together. And the hull to main deck misalignment at the bow. I started setting the main deck from the stern towards the bow. Fixing this problem at the bow would be very difficult. The misalignment is now fixed. These small marked areas need to be trimmed about a sixteenth of an inch so that the deck will sit correctly. These tiny voids can be filled with small plastic strips, super glued into place, trimmed, and carefully sanded smooth. The photo wetch railings will hide these areas. The O1 superstructure level fits tightly on the main deck. The O1 superstructure side detail is also nicely done. 
The wood deck scribing is very petite throughout the model. Here's the bow deck detail. And here's the stern deck detail. Note the louver ventilation surface detail. Note the hatch and storage box surface detail. Here's the petite side skid deck detail, anti-skid deck detail. Note how the trees are attached to the parts, making it easy to remove them. Now for close-ups of the superstructure tape-up. The superstructure of the forward area looks pretty good. Moving along the superstructure, note the surface detail. Here's the aft superstructure area. Now we're going to move forward from the stern to the bow. The back sides of the superstructure detail look impressive. It's something I hadn't noticed before that the Bismarck superstructure is much narrower than in other battleships. The main turrets also have a lot of small parts and photo wedge to add. Now, moving closer in, you can really see the level of surface detail on all the parts. Fit of the superstructure layers are pretty tight. The aft superstructure layers also fit tightly together. And the surface detail on the main turrets is very well done and very petite. The lower bow parts will need several coats of super glue to fill the seams. To get a better elevation on the barrels, you'll need to cut off the ends. I also cut off the ends of the positioning rings so that the barrels could be removed for painting. Each AA gun has seven parts. The right side AA gun barrels are badly deformed on each sprue E, and therefore you're going to have to replace these barrels with aftermarket ones. Hi everybody. Thanks for being with us today, and I hope you enjoyed the tour of this beautiful kit by Trumpeter. The Bismarck builds up to a really impressive model, but you have to be very patient because it's got a lot of parts. And stay tuned on our channel here for more tape-ups of more different kinds of kits. And visit us at www.mikeashy.com, and have a great day, and be safe.